Previously on Nasspacker. All of this is to be the fourth biggest inland sea in the world. That's very sad. I don't have anywhere to sleep and I'm not sure I can go to the next city. And they're proposing to me actually to sleep in their, in their house. <laughs> How do I look? Like a Shrek. <laughs> We're here today in the city of Khiva. According to the legend, the city was founded 2,500 years ago by one of the sons of Noah, who found the well uh, here in the area and just said Hiwa, which would apparently mean sweet water. A while after that, the city was conquered by the Arabs who made it one of the major trade posts in the Silk Road. One very interesting fact is that one of the first backpackers of the history, uh, Ibn Battuta, the Moroccan explorer from the 14th century, came all the way to here and described the city, imagine the city at the time, it was so busy that uh, it was impossible to find one's way within a crowd. The city had as much as a hundred mosques and half of that number of madrasa. And as such, it was considered one of the main centers of Islam. Today, it's recognized as World Heritage by the UNESCO. So the first place you want to make sure to visit is Calta Minor, Khiva's Blue Minaret. Calta Minor is one of the most beautiful minarets all over Uzbekistan. The minaret is surely the highlight of any traveler who visits Ichan Kala in Khiva. Initially, it was supposed to be much higher, but they could never finish its construction. So the final building ended up reaching a height of 29 meters. Today, it is a very popular spot for tourists to take a picture in front of. So the second place of interest you want to visit is the stone palace known as Tash Hovli. Tash Hovli is a beautiful palace that was built in the 19th century and it is typical of the classic Uzbek Islamic architecture that uses massively wood carvings and blue as the main colors for decorations. So we are uh, inside one of the rooms of the concubines of the, the king. That's actually the harem in here. So he had around 40 concubines and each one had a room. That's a very beautiful building. Indeed, you have plenty areas to explore with beautiful ceilings, beautiful walls and beautiful doors. Apart from some roofs where you can get some beautiful views of the city, the rest is full of mausoleums dedicated to the city's many saints. and to many other museums recording the rich history of the city. They're opening back doors for me and I'm entering museums all by myself. So I'm the only one in this quite big museum about scientific research and medicine. So these are a lot of paintings and explanation about how they used to treat things. So you probably see here more Arabic students or merchants Maybe a, somebody who came from uh, Hajj. The other museums are more dedicated to the rich culture of the city and are in honor of the local poets and even the local Mennonite community that came all the way from Germany. For well, those who would like to pray, the prayers are actually happening outside of the, of the old city. So even though the old city has a lot of old mosques and madrasas, it happens uh, here, right outside the gate. So here, entering back again. Indeed, all the old mosques have been turned into museums, and that is the case of Juma Mosque, which is the most emblematic one. Once you step inside, you realize that the structure is made of hundreds of pillars, namely 212. When walking between the pillars, you can feel how the architecture ensures a constant airflow and an optimal light exposure. Each of the wooden pillars is decorated with special carvings made by local craftsmen. In medieval times, this one, one of the main mosques where locals used to gather to perform the daily prayers.
Now one site you cannot miss in Hiva is to visit the highest minaret in Ichankala. The name of the minaret is a combination of the last two rulers of Hiva, Islam Hoja Minaret. The tower is very beautiful, nicely decorated between the blue and green patterns and the beige of the bricks. We're here to catch the train now to go to Bukhara and this train goes all the way to Tashkent I think. So uh, it's gonna be an interesting ride to see how the train functions in here. Ahmad. Six and a half hour train journey alone can seem a bit long but I'm 100% sure that I will meet some friendly locals. And five minutes later, that's exactly what happened. Okay, we're here with, what's your name? Islam, my name is Islam. Islam? Furkan. Furkan. Furkan, yeah. Roski Niki, yes. Uh, My brother. Turkey. Turkey. Turkey brother. No, okay. Uh, your name? What? Nasir. 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 Okay, yeah. Makoj. Yes, close, yeah. Uh, face face. Or that? Despite us not speaking the same language, we ended up understanding each other. Using the bit of Russian and Uzbek that I picked up during my trip, and the bit of English, Arabic, and sometimes even Turkish that they picked up from their side. Yeah. Uzbek speaking Russian, you speak like that. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. yes. English, Arabic. A little bit. Yeah, English. <laughs> I see you. Yes. Okay. Afghani. Afghani? Yes. Ah. I see. <laughs> so I look, I look like I'm from Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> After taking a few selfies with my new friends, we ended up talking for hours, hours and hours about everything from Uzbekistan to sports, to music, to their families, to even looking at our respective passports to see a bit of where we traveled around the world. <laughs> oh, wow. You? Yeah. Very good how they organize. You know, clean place. Yes, yes. For me? Good. Like they put everywhere. Uh, my name? Yeah. Furqat. Martin Furqat. Yes, Olympic. Oh, you know Martin Furqat? <laughs> Francis, yes. Francis. Yes, yes, but uh, Wow, so he knows Martin Fourcade, biathlon uh, <laughs> champion yes. of France. Uzbekistan visa. visa. Why? Uh, visa. visa. Mumkin America, Mumkin Europe. Uzbekistan, you need a visa to go out. Yes. They are telling me basically that in uh, Uzbekistan they have they have different passports. So if your passport is green, that's only a passport that you can use to move within the country. If your passport is red, right? Yes, red. Red, red. red. red then the, the passport, then you can use it to, oh. to travel outside. Only green, two passports. Green, yes. green, red. Green, red. Yes. Okay. Uh, red to Australia, America. And green inside. Yes, inside to Uzbekistan, ah. green. Very interesting. Thanks to the company of my new friends, this six and a half hour train ride didn't seem long at all after all. No, 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 no. No, 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 He's taking a rest. <laughs> yeah, it's been almost six hours. So now only 30 minutes left uh, before we reach uh, the city of Bukhara. After we reached, they negotiated a taxi for the three of us yes. and decided to graciously stop me in an area where there were a few hotels since I didn't have any for the night. I'm trying to find a hotel. I saw one on booking, but I didn't book. It's 1 a.m. Hopefully. They will still, uh, they will still be open. Let's see. I just arrived here, and Bakhtiyor is here. Uh, the guest has just woke him up, but it's so happy. I don't know how to translate it. He's using Google Translate to uh, to arrange Bakhtiyor it. Bakhtiyor is happy. All right, this is funny. Check this out. I don't know how he translates. Okay, okay. I do not Nassim. know how it translates. Nasim means the light breeze of the morning. Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> I just asked him if he has a little bit of water. What's his answer? Are you hungry? And then he opens the fridge and starts giving me giving me food. So as if as if you just came to your uncle's house. I'm so amazed by how nice Bakhtiyor is. I wake him up at 2 a.m. I don't have any booking and he's just smiling, laughing, and preparing food for me even though I didn't ask for anything. I know Uzbekistan. Really. <laughs> I think Probably some of the nicest people, the most welcoming of the virus in all my trips. It's top on nationality. Francis? Moroccan. We are now talking in an international language. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you get out at almost 12 
and they still serve breakfast. This place is definitely amazing. Despite me waking up very late, Bartio's wife cooked a full-fledged breakfast for me. And on top of that, it's delicious. Here we are in the streets of Bukhara. Starting the, the day a bit late, I should say. Past 12, I have to speed it up a bit, make sure I get the most of the city. Very clean, very, very calm. Uh, lots of beautiful buildings. I don't know where to go. I mean, there's so many signs. Just two minutes walking outside the guest house were already so many beautiful buildings, such as the Liabihos Ensemble, that today holds in its center patios, cafes, restaurants, and even local craftsmen manufacturing local art crafts for the local shops. I decided to uh, walk a bit away from the main uh, old city just to see what the rest of the city looks like. We're just entering some small streets. It looks like a, an old neighborhood. Construction site over here. Getting lost paid off. I'm looking at a, a very beautiful building just behind. Without even realizing it, I ended up reaching one of the beautiful sites of Bukhara called Chorminor. And <laughs> just next to it was a very interesting shop collecting artifacts from the Soviet time. These are the joys of getting lost. We just, uh, a random, uh, a random guy just told us, hey, come, 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 I'll open a house for you. And uh, here we are. Always very curious, I decided to go up and check out what was there. A new city out there? In here, obviously, you see all these beautiful old buildings. I'm not sure I'm gonna walk here because uh, I've been to the room downstairs. It looks really, really not so um, so solid. Some holes. All right, with the vantage point I got, it's now time for me to head to the heart of the old city and visit the main attractions. All these gorgeous buildings were a collection of madrasas and old mosques that are now turned into museums and places of business. So I kept walking and exploring until I got completely hypnotized by this very talented local musician. They have invested all the uh, historical places, kind of like a compromise between uh, business and uh, culture. Uzbekistan, like Iran or Turkey, is very well known for handmade carpets. So I stepped in this handmade carpet store where every carpet is made by hand from the best material by local craftsmen. But little did I know that I would be looking at some of the most expensive carpets in the world. How much is this one? This one is $25,000. Let's go touch a, a $25,000 carpet. so many of these madrasas and, uh, and mosques. 
that uh, a lot of them are in random places with nobody uh, to come and visit. So I think for them it's not that exceptional, you know? It's just a regular building, but for us. to the mosque there's some uh, reading of the Quran we we'll listen a little bit to that sit down and just enjoy it. All these kids started surrounding me, wondering what am I doing here. So this is a football field. There are coaches here, I think, and uh, I'm here to find the next Ronaldinho. Because yes, Ronaldinho is the best player in the history. No debate. No debate. You have soup? Vada? Soup. Okay. Yeah. Pizzilitrovi. Paltara? Dva? Dva. Karoche, what is this? Obshi? Dvitnatsit. This is the end of the day. Looks like we've seen everything, or most of the things. But I think I'm, a, I'm gonna go back to some of the uh, some of the sites that I really like because now the light the light is perfect. So maybe I can get a few uh, a few more beautiful shots. It looks amazing again. Check this out. Assalamu alaikum. Beton mehmohan oymo va Bukhoro shahri zur. Toshkent, Samarkand bandida Bukhoro va tarixi obido mul mul mehmon biot. Ham kachar yurtomu bayam sara oylomu bayam sara mishet. Hi everybody. My name is Bexel. Welcome to our guest house located in Bukhara. Bukhara is the most beautiful city. There are uh, many memories uh, touristic destinations. Name of the hotel is Minore Hut. Best hotel in Bukhara. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm discovering things every year because we, we're still talking. And they're saying that um, the mom in here is cooking uh, the breakfast that you saw, actually. It's so good that you have 10 hotels in Bukhara that are asking this breakfast from her. So uh, not only it's for the guests here, but she's selling it to, uh, to all the other hotels. So, uh, uh, bravo. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. They're shooting a reality TV. 